Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Lena Jackson Moore claims her life turned upside down after her friend wrecked her eyebrows. Hannah Johnson claims she told Ms. Moore not to make such a drastic change, but there was no reasoning with her. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Moore versus Johnson. Ms. Moore, you are suing Ms. Johnson for $1,800. You say she was negligent when she microbladed your eyebrows. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Explain to the court what happened. So I met Hannah and we became friends and I told her that she had beautiful eyebrows and I wanted beautiful eyebrows too. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, Your Honor, can I show you a picture of my eyebrows before? So they were very thin, blonde eyebrows and I wanted them to be a little bit more uh, thicker and a little bit more dark. Uh, so Hannah told me she was a microblading artist and that she could help me with this. And I told her that I wanted them to look similar to like Brooke Shields or well, honor. it's interesting you say that because when you were standing up here and I looked at your eyebrows, it was the first thing I thought, like, oh, she has eyebrows like Brooke Shields. I was literally thinking that before you said These that. These are even bigger. They're like... So, so listen, I want to go to Ms. Johnson, Ms. Johnson because I want you to explain the process you go through. How do you go to determine what type of eyebrow you should draw or however they call it, tattoo, yeah. for a person. How do you go about deciding that? Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, first and foremost, as Ms. Moore has already established, she and I are friends first. We did not meet in under any professional circumstance. I met her at a party and as her friend, I suggested as her friend and professional that she not go for the Brooke Shields, Frida Kahlo, or Lily Collins look as she put in her questionnaire. If you'd like, I can show you the questionnaire I give all of my clients. Yes, I'd like to see that. So you say it wasn't a business relationship, but you did have her fill out this questionnaire. I did. I treated her with the same impartiality I would treat any of my clients. Because I care about her personally, I did go ahead and give my personal and professional suggestion. Hey girl, I don't know if the Frida Kahlo look is going to necessarily work for you. What she wanted was something much thicker, much darker than what she was naturally given. My job as a microblading artist is to make small incisions into my client skin and fill it in with semi-permanent to permanent tattoo grade ink. But what because I don't I know understand this is here is why you just changed them so drastically directly without taking small steps showing me I was so... So wait, I, I'm looking at the questionnaire and I'm looking at the pictures where it's you choose your color and your shape. And what she chose, if you'd like, I can show you the rest of the questionnaire. What she chose was something much thicker. The bottom dark color. The bottom dark. I see that. Along with the chart where it shows the thickest block that you can get in terms of shape. What I suggested as her friend and as a professional esthetician was the top brow shape and tint that you see there. Something light, something a bit more thin, but still something more than what she was given naturally. Did you choose this darker brow? Ms. Moore? Yes, I did. And so you chose a dark brow, mm -hmm. but what about the brow you have don't you like? You don't like the shape, you don't like the color, what? But it's darker and it's bigger because it's just like my entire face. When I walk around in the streets, people are just staring at me, laughing at me, and I work as a hostess at a restaurant and they barely call me anymore because... For your eyebrows? Of, of how I look. First of all, you don't look that bad. I will say that. It may not be what you want, but you are not, you know, looking like some freak. I feel like one. Well, I can see you're very upset. Right. I just wish she would have taken it in steps and showed me because she was so sure that this was not 
a good fit for me. And she is a professional, should give me professional advice. And well, I think she I did. did give you the professional advice, but, but she wanted a dark brow because the people we are talking about wear very dark brows. And I will say that I think she even went a little lighter than the brow you chose. And it, because They're way bigger. Coming up. She wants eyebrows to stand out. Very bushy shape. But these are so Extra bushy. large. What you're describing is what you have. No, these are way bigger than what I described. And later. I told him all of the terrible experiences that I've had it. with dating apps. And he said, don't worry about that. This is a matchmaking service. I do all the screening for you. Not a single date was good. Closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Lena Jackson Moore, who brought Hannah Johnson to court over a microblading procedure. The minute she saw what she looked like, she ran out of my salon. If you'd yeah, like, I, I, was can stuff, I can show you the, the invoice where she did not pay me for any I, of my I'd services. like to see the invoice, please. Thank but you. I still think that she should have taken it into steps, even though if I wanted it a certain way, she wouldn't even show this to the world because she is even embarrassed Your Honor, about the Would you like to result. see the rest of the questionnaire wherein my suggestions are clearly printed? Yes. They were all met with offense and they were all disregarded. As her friend as, and as a professional, I let her know what I thought would look good on her and what would be a, more of a better fit. So you say, I recommend medium and just slightly darker. But caterpillar what eyebrows shape, was not what shape What shape and for. size do you want? Very bushy shape. But these are so Extra bushy. large. What you're describing is what you have. No, these are way bigger job. than what I described. And as a professional, you didn't take it into steps. And then Okay, what are the steps? What steps could you take it in? There so aren't any. Because I know this is a financial commitment as well as an aesthetic choice, I make sure I go through this questionnaire. I make sure I establish this is going to be a painful process. It's tattooing. I'm but, using a needle, I'm using ink. Tattoo artists don't honor. stop in between and ask, does this color work for you? Does yeah, this that's hurt? what I've heard we, they people establish do. that prior to the and procedure. And you said as it was. clearly that it wouldn't look good on me. And you insisted. And why didn't you stop saying, like, this is, what would look good at you? Instead, what? you just kept Ms. going. Ms. Moore, that's what the questionnaire is. And you're so upset right now, like, it's yeah, not. it's such an emotional trauma for me. Because it's just like walking so around the street. So now you didn't even pay for them. Laughing. People are not walking down the street laughing at your eyebrows. They are. They, they are not. Trust me. This is you imagining this. There is no one walking down the street why, laughing at your eyebrows. Why don't my boss call me to work? Probably because you running around the office acting like you don't have no sense or wherever it was, the restaurant. Where'd you work? A restaurant. That's yeah, you don't have a personality anymore because you stressed about these eyebrows you asked for. Yeah, but I wish that she as a friend would have helped me out. She there did. Is no stopping she did on this questionnaire. This is this is what you ask for. This is what I suggest. This is what you ask for. This is what I suggest. Which eyebrow do you choose? The darkest one. You put it on. Now you don't like it. I realize you are upset that you don't like it, but I don't know why you're upset with Ms. Johnson instead of with yourself, because you did not listen to the professional. Now let me ask you this: You didn't pay. So you're suing for $1,800. What's that for? Because I get, want these to get rid of these. I want a permanent tattoo removal. Sorry, I'm so emotional. Uh, I want the permanent tattoo removal so I can, so I can have my like, regular eyebrows back that I pencil in and that I can look like myself again. So if you don't mind, my, Your Honor, here is an invoice for the permanent tattoo removal. I will, will need 12 sessions at $150 each. When she Ooh. came to me initially saying, I don't want to pencil my eyebrows in every day. I'd like something more permanent, something longer lasting than a brow tint, which would have only lasted a few months. But she knew want... coming into Did she this do process, permanent or semi-permanent? She went permanent. Oh, okay. But between permanent and semi-permanent, semi-permanent lasts up to six months. Permanent lasts up to a year. But so this regardless is like of what waking she did, up it would have been a long lasting Results. So the bottom line is, after a year or so of this, these eyebrows that she has are going to start fading they're anyway. They're going to start fading, yes. And they're going to need to be touched up. Yes. All right. I've heard enough.
Um, Ms. Moore, you're so pitiful. You really are. I can tell you really don't like these eyebrows. And I feel badly for you because I know that eyebrows are just an important part of a woman's face that we're very particular about. It's just a thing, and I get that. What I do understand is that Ms. Johnson really did do her due diligence. She really did walk you through the process. She really did make suggestions to you, not just orally, but in writing about what she thought would look best. And you did, in fact, choose an eyebrow that is even darker than the one that she did. I hate this for you because I know you're upset, but unfortunately, this court cannot award you $1,800 to get eyebrows removed that you chose. This is on you. And if you don't like them and you feel the need to get them removed, you will have to pay for that yourself. I would say to you, with any beauty choice that you first don't like, whether it's a hair color or a haircut, and women in the gallery, you can attest to this. Sometimes we go want to do a drastic change. When she said drastic change, I was like, we've all been there. Where you want that drastic change and then you do it and you're like, right? I shouldn't have done that. But if you give yourself time, you may begin to feel more comfortable with it. But I'm here to tell you right now, you still look beautiful. Your eyebrows are not completely and totally out of pocket. And if they were, I would tell you. Trust me, I'm here to tell people the truth. That's my job, all right? All right? All right. Court is adjourned. Judgment for the defendant. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I'm sorry, girl. Wait for that bad review. So, I offer to color correct it for you for free. I did my due diligence. Good luck, sis. Coming up. The first man that I went out with was super overweight when I also put in my profile that I'm very passionate about fitness and eating healthy. My second and third date were both people that have never been out of Chicago, so no travel experience there. And then I had a man that had five children. Wow. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Evan Presley claims she failed to find love after six months with a matchmaker, despite his guarantee. Sam Garrett claims Ms. Presley didn't give her dates a chance. This is a case of Presley versus Garrett. Ms. Presley, you are suing Mr. Garrett for $3,750 because you say his matchmaking service failed. Yes, Your Honor. All right, tell the court what happened. I am suing Mr. Garrett for $3,750 because that's what I paid him in matchmaking service fees. He guaranteed that I'd find a relationship after six months in our six month contract. I filled out a profile and none of the people I went on dates with matched my profile at all. Okay, so let me understand the process. Mr. Garrett, you run a matchmaking business? Yes. All right. And as part of that business, people come in and express to you the kind of mate they are looking for? Or do you interview people and match them to someone you feel they would be a good match with? We, we have people come in and we interview them. And we get a survey of what they're looking for in a potential partner and we try and match them together based on how they fill out our intake form. Okay, so what did you say you wanted? I said that I'm passionate about traveling, that I'm a Christian, that I wanted somebody that was in the same stage of life as myself, which is no kids, and all of the dates I went on, the first man that I went out with was super overweight when I also put in my profile that I'm very passionate about fitness and eating healthy, my second and third date were both people that have never been out of Chicago, so no travel experience there. And then I had a man that had five children, five children already. Wow. Yes. And then there wow. was another man who was not ready to commit. Coming up. I think she would have been fine if she didn't find love if she just went on some decent dates. But she didn't even get that. Closed captioning provided by you're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Heaven Presley and Sam Garrett over matchmaking services. 
Do you have a copy of your intake Excuse form me. that Ms. Presley filled out? I do not have a copy of the intake form, but I do have a contract, a copy of the contract that she did sign. I'll look at that. And on my profile form, uh, I put completely different thing than any of the dates that I went on. Okay, so she says she's interested in fitness and you give her someone that is not physically fit. Wow. She says she's interested in travel and you give her someone that's never left the city of Chicago. Again, the, the you matches You say are... she's interested in this time of yep. her life having no kids and being free to travel and you match her with somebody with five kids. How do you avoid becoming a place that just basically promises people's, people love, letting them fill out certain questionnaires, and then you just line up any random people, it's not and then they go on dates, and then if they don't find love, you didn't guarantee it anyway, so you're okay. First of all, we cannot guarantee it. We don't guarantee it, but we try and bring people closer to meeting people they would not normally meet in their day-to-day -day lives. He promised me, he promised me in person, he said that I would find love. So, Mr. Garrett, why'd you come to court with a copy of the contract but not a copy of the intake form? Oof, um, oversight. Did you come to court with evidence of the people you matched her with, like these people she says she went out with? Do you have evidence of those people? I don't have the evidence, although I do, uh, of them directly, I did talk with them. All right, I've heard enough. Um, it is clear to me, when you, and that's why I wanted to make it clear, are you a service that matches based upon criteria? Or are you a service that matches upon, like, you believing why these certain people are good matches for her. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. I was giving you time to testify, Mr. Garrett, so I could get a better understanding about the process and whether or not a person coming into your business should expect to leave with people who match what she wants for herself or what she really hasn't thought about wanting for herself. You could not make that clear. And it seems very clear to me that Ms. Presley was clear about what she wanted. It has been determined by this court, judgment for the plaintiff, for $3,750, because I do not believe you got what you were bargained for in this contract. And Mr. Garrett, in the future, when you are matching, you have to make sure that you are specific about what your service is. I think she would have been fine if she didn't find love, if she just went on some decent dates. But she didn't even get that. Judgment for the plaintiff, $3,750. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $3,750. Oh, I didn't exaggerate. exaggerate. I did not exaggerate. It's an exaggeration. No, she ruled in my favor. You may now exit the courtroom. Ladies first. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.